So continuing on from the previous video with the Sony TA4650 VFET amplifier, we managed to get this thing up and running, but there were some issues around uh, distortion and noise and whatnot. The switch gear is really, really stuck in position and everything needs a really good clean. So I've decided before I do the big parts order, I'm gonna strip the preamp. We're gonna try something a little different this time. I'm not opposed to taking apart any switch gear and we probably will end up doing that seems to be popular people like to see that in videos but we are also going to try an ultrasonic cleaner this time we're going to try some different fluids we've got ipa and a dedicated cleaning fluid that is supposed to be good for electronics use this will heat and ultrasonically clean i am worried about what it will do to capacitors and things so we're going to be careful doing this there's not a lot of info on if this is safe or not but at the end of the day if it kills the electrolytic capacitors we're replacing them anyway so it doesn't really matter but this switch gear either way i really want to try an ultrasonic cleaner and see what sort of results we get. Yeah, we're just gonna sort of take this one step at a time as it comes at us like we do in every other video and let's just see what happens. Credit where credit's due to Sony, like the accessibility in the front end of this thing is just amazing. I was a little bit worried about taking this apart without the components yet, but honestly, this is super straightforward to remove. Looks like we've got all connectors here, so we can literally disconnect to the entire front end and pull out this entire board without any soldering. This one's not too different. There are some wires joining them, but we can take them out as a single unit anyway. Fantastic. I love it. So I'm gonna take this board out first, I think. I want to have a look at these big clunker switches and yeah, see what's going on in there. I'll tell you what, Sony is uh, really blowing my mind with the, the stuff that they did back in the 70s. I haven't seen a lot of this before. This, this input selector is pretty much standard. I've seen that everywhere. But these tog toggle switches, ooh, <laughs> that, did, that didn't break off, by the way. Um, I have never seen these before. I haven't worked on a lot of vintage Sony gear and uh, they are very similar to the Alps slidey switches. I think that is the technical name. They do move the same, but they are really, really st duck in position. I'm not sure if I can completely disassemble these because I can see a rivet going through the center and this looks like some very heavy gauge metal. So I'm pondering at the moment that we remove all the switch gear, we'll ultrasonically clean them, like really extended ultrasonic cleaning. We will wash the board as well, but I'll go easier on the board because there are carbon resistors and stuff on here. The only thing I am super concerned about is these two little guys. These are actually VFETs also for the phono section. They need to be respected and are irreplaceable also. So we will remove those. But uh, yeah, this is just really, really crazy. And Sony, uh, they like to play tricks on you. I thought I broke this <laughs> when I started taking this apart but this actually is designed to come off in two pieces. So let's start ripping this thing down and uh, see what we end up doing with this thing.
All right, so we've got the uh, switch gear all removed and I thought we'd have a quick look at it before we start really digging in. Uh, I've taken one of them apart already, which was this switch. Uh, and I thought we would just have a, a closer look at it with the microscope before I try cleaning it, just so we know what we're actually working with. So as expected, there is a lot of dried grease and gunk in there and the whole thing sort of just pivots like that and it is pressed together with rivets so you are not taking this thing apart without a lot of destruction you may be able to put it back together but i am not going to attempt that i am going to put this in ultrasonic cleaner and see what results we get i think it's going to work really well on this being all metal uh, you can see how much gunk there is there as well. The um, the fingers, get it to focus, pretty bad. So yeah, that's going to go on the ultrasonic cleaner as well. I'm going to take the fingers off so I don't lose them. Uh, but we're going to try it on just one of these and see what happens. Just having a look at this also, this is the input selector. And I decided to just sort of look in at it from a few different angles. There's a lot of fluff and stuff in here overall though it's not that bad there's definitely some corrosion bit of scraping this one's going to go in the cleaner also i think and we'll see what it does to the metal see if it cleans it up So just the results of the first switch through the ultrasonic cleaner, it, it, it's just night and day. I, I can't believe how good an ultrasonic cleaner is. The uh, sliding contacts are still going to need a bit of a scrub, uh, but it has removed pretty much all the tarnishing, except maybe a little bit along the base, if you look carefully. So I think we'll still give those a bit of a scrub, but when it comes to these contacts, like here's a before switch, they all look about the same, and then after. that That is just ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I am really, really, really glad I got this thing and having a look in there as well. It's just, it looks almost brand new. I've still got to put new grease in there somehow. That is uh, going to be the process for cleaning these switches, I think. Then we can start reassembling them all.
All right, so the input slash phono board is basically done. Just have to change these two capacitors, which I'm coming back to. Uh, I replaced the Nichicon uh, low impedance capacitors with Silmic capacitors, uh, which worked out really well. Decided for just sort of general power supply capacitors to go with Nichicon uh, PW series. Quite like these caps, I've had good luck with them in the past, so they've replaced those. These caps, I do have replacements for that are 100 volt, but I'm not happy with Sony's choice here because these are 100 volt rated caps and that is a 97 volt rail. Way too close to the margin. I would like like a 20% sort of tolerance I think would be good. So I'm gonna find a capacitor that's a higher voltage and I do not carry anything that's like 150 volts. That's pretty crazy for an electrolytic usually. So I'll order those and come back to it. Input selector is looking amazing considering I didn't even take it apart and just ultrasonic cleaned it with a bit of scrubbing. A note for anyone working on these amps that these switches, the uh, retention claws that lock down on the PCB, they're basically single use. You open these things up and they're they're just gonna break off when you try to pin them back down again. I lost almost all of them. I think I was only able to put two of them back in their place. But overall, because it's screwed into this metal plate, which is holding onto the PCB, plus all the soldering holding the bottom sled in place, I don't think it's going to be an issue with this moving around. They're rock solid. Everything feels nicely held together. The only other option would be to epoxy the PCB to the metal housing, which I think is way more stupid because then you can never open these switches up again. That is it for this board. On to the next one. All right, so here's the deal with the volume pot. I really wanted to take this thing completely apart, clean it, reassemble it, et cetera, et cetera. But Alps have this really bad habit of putting single use retention systems to lock everything together on these pots and they're basically not designed to ever come apart again. The newer ones like you saw on the Sansui had those lock washers that you basically press on, you can cut them off and you can technically replace them. In this case, the shaft has like a, a, a sort of rectangular cutout that's pressed out, like a mushroomed out. And it is very difficult to separate these and put them back together again. I have sort of seen some people do this, but it is quite difficult. And I'm not game to do that with a pot like this. And now the other problem was ultrasonic cleaning. I was really, really worried that it would take the carbon tracks off the pot because ultrasonic cleaning has a habit of removing silk screening and printing that's on parts. I, I threw the rear cover on and you could see it already starting to take the ink off the metal. But I did it anyway. I, I pondered this for ages and I was trying to clean it manually. So I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for 10 minutes and I've checked all the values and it seems okay. This is one of those instances where I do not recommend doing this. I don't know 
if it damages carbon tracks in pots, but I thought I am going to have to do this again in the future, so I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and find out what, what happens. It is a bit scratchy now because all the lubricant is gone, but I'm going to put some fader lube on there and it should be okay. So I'm going to reassemble this. Uh, the switch I did off camera because you've already seen that and we're going to do the PCB. Right, so another board done, looking really, really nice, much better than before. The volume pot, like I said, I'm not completely happy with it. I wanted to dis completely dismantle it and rebuild it again. Put a bit of oil down the shaft after all the cleaning and it feels okay at the moment. It tests okay, but the truth's going to be when we put some sound through it and find out if it's scratchy or not. I just hope I haven't done any damage to it, but... It's as good as we can do. I didn't want to just spray it after taking apart everything else. Uh, the muting switch is way better. If anything, I think this is going to be what was responsible for that distortion because uh, the oxidization was really bad. Changed out two low ESR Nichicon caps to Elna Silmix again. I had those in stock, so we do not have to come back to this board unless something is wrong with it. Hopefully not. Uh, okay, so... On to the next board. Right, so Sony are definitely losing points for this one. What is that? Come on. I mean, it works, I guess, but ugh. And then look at this board. That is horrific. Ugh. All right, so this was uh, quite the job. I started removing one of the switches from the, uh, the, the mounting bracket thinking this thing would split apart, but it doesn't. Uh, the, the entire sled comes out the back. And so you can just leave them all in this metal housing, which is nice because we don't have to mess with the crimping things, which is an absolute nightmare. But basically, you've got like a retaining clip. Then there's a spring behind it. There's like a copper grounding thing I think it is, or some sort of a keeper. Then you've got this little arm that's responsible for the latching mechanism as you push it in and out, it latches in or latches out. And then you've got the sleds, which basically just pull straight out the back, as you would have seen in the video. 
And yeah, they all I, I kept them all separate just in case there were some differences. I didn't want to mix them up, but they all look basically the same, even though they've got different part numbers on a couple of them. Uh, the, the actual um, little fingers look the same on all of them, so I'll probably just take the fingers off the arms and uh, wash them all. Yeah, well, it's definitely not fun to take apart, but I wouldn't say it's the end of the world either. So yeah, get this cleaned.
All right, so tone control board is all done. Uh, all the pots have been cleaned as best I can. Uh, we'll see how all that performs once we get it all back together. All the switch gear is done on the front. This was a lot of work, this section. I really didn't look forward to it. PCBs are as clean as I can get them. I've redone all the wiring, so it should be nice and neat now, unlike what Sony did. So yeah, moving on from that. Uh, we've got the final board. So this is the uh, speaker selection board, headphone output, uh, speaker protection relay, and not much else on here. I'm basically just going to take off this uh, speaker selection switch and the headphone socket and throw them both in the ultrasonic cleaner. We will be replacing the relay in the future. Need to order that, but it looks really good actually the contacts look amazing in this so i don't have any problems leaving this for the time being Right, so here it all is. Uh, everything is done in the front end. Well, not completely done, but I've gone over everything. There's still a few capacitors to change. Uh, I need to change these carbon resistors for the headphone socket. They'll go to precision metal films. This relay has got to be changed, but the uh, speaker selector is all done. The boards are all clean, uh, ready to go. Just boards on boards on boards. Everything's looking amazing. Wash the uh, chassis while I had it apart. Still got to wash this bottom piece. I'll take that out separately when we've got the amp board and power supply out next. Gave the face plate a bit of a wash. We're still going to have to do a bit of work on that, but uh, we'll come back to it. So, yeah, I'm just going to reassemble this thing off camera because you've already seen me dismantle it. And let's just see if this thing still works, I guess, because uh, we've done a lot. And I don't know if I've just created more problems for myself. Let's hope not. All right, so I've got all the amplifier back together. It's warmed up. I'm running through all the controls, just checking if I've done any damage, if something's not right, et cetera, et cetera. And this is one of those reasons you do not take your work for granted, thinking you've done everything perfect. You can do everything as methodically as possible, and these things will still bite you in the ass every time. And this is what happened in the case of this one. This uh, overlay some footage, but this muting switch was intermittently dropping probably half the signal. And I was running around in circles with this trying to work out what the hell was going on. And I finally tracked it down to this switch. Uh, so I took the whole board out, I remounted it again, and uh, I think we've got it. I'm going to be very, very mindful of this and just keep an eye on it for quite a while and make sure this does not come back again because I have trust issues with it now. Uh, but regardless, I've just been running through all the switch gear, actuating everything, checking for signal changes, balance issues. Balance is probably the main thing I'm concerned about. Making sure the channels track evenly as I turn on all the modes because that points to a dirty switch or something going on. I think this one's a tone control, so there is a bit of variance there because you're bringing in two more pots that aren't perfectly balanced. 
but other than that, all the other controls are looking really good. And the balance knob is basically vertical, maybe a slight tilt to the right. So I'm happy with that. It uh, looks like we've got good switch performance across the board. And after doing those basic checks, I'm happy to hook this up to the audio analyzer and let's see if that distortion issue is gone now. All right, so got everything set up again as we did in the first video. One watt load, uh, channel A 0.07% distortion. Switch to channel B now, 0.07% distortion. So we have fixed the distortion issue apparently. Uh, which is great. We achieved something with the amount of work I've put in over the last week. So let's just run this up to 10 volts and just see how we're looking there. 0.02% distortion. And on channel A, 0.02% distortion. So it is tracking quite nicely between the channels now. There's no sign of any real deviation. One last thing I'm going to do, which I had a couple of requests about, I'm going to bypass the preamp entirely and I'm gonna feed directly into the power amp and I'll show you what distortion this is capable of with none of the preamp pots or switches or anything in the signal chain. Okay, so this is the purest signal path possible. This is going straight from a very clean DAC straight into the power amp. We're still around the uh, one watt mark, and as you can see, 0.01% distortion, which is really, really, really good. And we'll go to channel B, same deal, still looking amazing. So this is pure power amp and shows you how much distortion and just background noise the preamp is adding in. So let's run this up to 10 volts again and we'll see how good it gets. So 10 volts, still 0.01% checking the other one and 0.01%. So that seems to be at the moment about as good as the amp modules are performing in regards to noise. That may improve more when we change out some transistors and some capacitors, but that is already very impressive for a 70s amplifier. All right, so that's it for another video. I know this was another long one, um, but everyone seems to enjoy seeing my methodical, really diving in sort of restorations of these amplifiers. I need to be super clear that you wouldn't pay a technician to do this sort of restoration work. I couldn't even begin to comprehend what it would cost in labor hours to do something like this. In, in your world, this is like 30 minutes, can't, can't take that long, maybe a day. No, I spent probably a week going through all these tone controls, rebuilding everything. Yes, I had to learn along the way, but it is still a monumental amount of labor and work to do this sort of a restoration at this sort of a level. These are passion projects for me. I do them because I want to bring some of these amplifiers back to as good as new condition again, and make sure they're preserved, but I only do it to amplifiers that interest me in certain ways that have an amazing history or are rare. And yeah, um, thank you for everyone who's started joining my channel. The subscriber count's been going up quite a bit lately and I appreciate everyone watching because it helps motivate me to do more videos like this because it sucks the life out of me with the amount of work that goes into stuff like this and making my shop smell like a 70s amplifier. Thank you for watching another video and we will be back with another one soon. The next one will be a bit of time, I think, because we have to order a lot of parts, a lot of capacitors, a lot of transistors. I've got to go through and itemize everything that is needed and that takes quite a few days to, to organize. We might do a little video in between where we replace the speaker binding posts. We can do like a mini video on that in between or something, but so anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.